वेलकम टू टूडेज लेक्चर टूडेज टॉपिक इज होमोजेनाइजेशन होमोजेनाइजेशन इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट स्टेप इन द लिक्विड मिल्क प्रोसेसिंग और मार्केट मिल्क प्रोसेसिंग विच आई हैव मैंशन अर्लियर एंड इट इज ए इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रोसेस बिफोर और आफ्टर पॉस्टुराइजेशन विच वी हैव डिस्कस थरोली एंड इवन इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ यू एच टी मिल्क even for making uhd milk homogenization should be done either before or after so we are going to discuss about what is homogenization about the machineries of homogenization about the process about the mechanism about the valve operation about the flow of operation or process requirement there is different stages like first stage second stage and then overall effect the factors affecting homogenization and the merits and demerits of homogenization here we can see the part of market milk processing flow which we have discussed earlier uh, here we can see that standardization preheating homogenization pasteurization and cooling this is the second part actually before this there is collection chilling preheating and all these are there and after that when it goes for pasteurization there will be these steps even if we want to make uhd milk these are the steps but their sequence may change sometime it can be after pasteurization sometime it can be before pasteurization similarly in case of uhd milk also homogenization is important process here we can see what is homogenization homogenization was invented by a french scientist named gaulin in 1899 homogenization primarily causes disruption of fat globules into much smaller ones that is it is a process of breaking breaking the larger fat globules into smaller ones so that it can be uniformly distributed in the milk the homogenization reduces fat globule size from an average of 3.5 micrometer in diameter to below 1 micrometer this is accompanied by a 4 to 6 fold increase in the fat and plasma interfacial surface area because the larger fat globules are broken into smaller so the total surface area for the fat globule is increased and thereby there is a increase in the interfacial surface area between fat and the rest that is the plasma in the right side diagram in the top we can see that larger fat globule size before homogenization and at the bottom we can see smaller fat globules distributed more uniformly here we will discuss about homogenizer the machine it is a machine that causes the subdivision of fat globules that is it breaks the fat globules it consists of a high pressure piston pump which forces the milk at high pressure and velocity through a narrow opening between the homogenizing valve and its seat so there is a valve and there is a seat through which the milk has to pass and it is passed through a high pressure and velocity that's how it is broken so fat globules in the milk is thus divided into smaller uniform particle size homogenizers are either single stage or double stage so it can have a single stage or double stage which we are going to discuss later here we can see the homogenizer machine in the left side there is a machine it's a compact design through which the milk passes and after the necessary treatment the milk comes out in the right side design the mechanism is explained we can see that from the right side arrow the unhomogenized milk is going inside and it is passing out through the narrow gap that is about 0.1 mm and from the left side there is a forcing device like piston and the gap is very less and under very high pressure the milk is passed through and at the time the fat globules are broken and then the homogenized milk is coming out as here due to the smaller particle size the fat is uniformly distributed here once again we can see a details diagram of a homogenizer basically it is a high pressure homogenizer with a pump 
and a homogenization device that is valve. So these two things are very important. One is the pump, another is the valve. So in the diagram, we can see there are 10 basic, basic components that is main drive motor, V-belt transmission, gearbox, damper, hydraulic pressure setting system, homogenizing device for second phase, then homogenizing device for first phase, and then solid stainless steel pump block, then piston, and then crankcase. Here we will understand about the homogenization valve. The distance between the seat and the forcer is approximately 0.1 millimeter or 100 times the size of fat globules in milk. The velocity of the milk is normally 100 to 400 meter per second in the narrow annular gap. The higher the homogenization pressure, the higher the speed. And the homogenization takes about 10 to 15 microseconds. So this is how the homogenization valve works in the process of homogenization. Here once again we can understand through these diagrams how the homogenization mechanism is. In the first diagram right side we can see that feeding of milk with a larger fat globules and then it is passing through with a seat we are telling and surrounding impact ring and from the bottom there is a valve which is giving the force and through this narrow aperture the milk is being forced through under high pressure and velocity and leading to breakdown of the fat globules and we can see the milk coming out with a smaller fat particles. In the left side diagram we can see there is actually two stage homogenizer in the bottom we can see first there is entry of the product and then there is first stage homogenization then it goes up and facing the second stage homogenization and finally the product is going out. Here we can see the workflow in a homogenizer or for making homogenized milk. You can see that from the left side arrow there is the entry of raw milk then it goes to the cream separator that is number two. From there the cream goes to the store and then the cream is going to the homogenizer and there is a mixing of other skim milk and then a standardized milk is prepared and then it comes through and then it get pasteurized that is with the red arrow and then it is going out as standardized milk with the homogenization. So uniformly fat is distributed. Here once more let us understand the homogenization process. Homogenization is a processing procedure aimed primarily at preventing the fat separation in liquid dairy products. Homogenization refers to the process of forcing the milk through a homogenizer with the object of subdividing the fat globules of uniform size. So big fat globule is subdivided into uniform smaller size. In homogenized milk, fat globule size is 2 micron or less in diameter. Here we can see the process requirements for homogenization. Firstly, the physical state and concentration of the fat phase is very important. Then temperature below 40 degrees Celsius results in incomplete dispersion of the fat phase. So lower temperature below 40 is not very good for dispersion of the fat. Then milk of high fat content are more difficult to homogenize and more likely to show fat clumping. When the fat percentage is very high, it may lead to the clumping of fat during the homogenization process. Increasing the temperature decreases the viscosity of milk and improves the transport of membrane material to the fat globule. So when the temperature is increased, that increases the viscosity and that helps in transport of membrane to the fat globule and thereby it is more efficient. So the temperature of 55 to 80 degrees Celsius is advised and the pressure between 20 to 25 megapascal is ideal. So these are the process requirements for homogenization. Here we will see about the flow characteristics in the homogenizer. When the liquid passes the narrow gap, the flow velocity increases. 
the speed will increase until the static pressure is so low that the liquid starts to boil. The maximum speed depends mainly on the inlet pressure. When the liquid leaves the gap, the speed decreases and the pressure increases again. The liquid stops boiling and the steam bubbles implode. This is the flow characteristic which is again explained through this diagram at the bottom. Here we can see that there is single stage and two stage homogenization. The homogenizers may be equipped with one device or with two devices connected in series. In two stage homogenization, the back pressure that is P2 is created by the second stage. Using modern devices, the best results are obtained when the relation of P2 and P1 is about 0.2. In the bottom diagram, we can see there is piston pump which is forcing the milk to pass through the first homogenizer or the first stage and then it is going to the second stage. In each case, there is a specific indicator for the pressure which we are going to discuss again. Here further we will discuss about single stage and two stage homogenization. The single stage homogenization may be used for milk with high fat content. Naturally it will have high viscosity and then two stage homogenization is used primarily to reach optimum results and to break up fat clusters in milk with high fat content. So when there is a high fat with a fat cluster that time to get optimum result we need to use two stage homogenization. In the figure here 1 and 2 we can see the disruption of fat globules in first and second stages of homogenization. Here we will discuss about the location of homogenizer in the processing line. In general the homogenizer is placed upstream that is before the final heating section in a heat exchanger. So we have discussed plate heat exchanger in case of HTST pasteurization. Generally it will be placed that is homogenizer will be placed before the final heating. In most plants for market milk the homogenizer is placed after the second regenerative section. So earlier I have mentioned the regenerative section where the hot milk goes out and it is used for heating the incoming cold milk. So at this stage after the regenerative section sometime the homogenizer is also placed. In case of EYST milk, in production of EYST milk the homogenizer is generally placed upstream in the indirect system. So we have discussed that there is indirect system and direct system for UHT. In case of indirect system it will be placed upstream that is before the final heating. Whereas in case of direct system it will be placed downstream that is after the final heating. So it will be at the aseptic side after UHT treatment. So in this case the homogenizer is of aseptic design. Here we will see the factors influencing the homogenization. So firstly the temperature of homogenization or temperature of milk that plays a very important role. We have discussed it East earlier at least it should be 40 degrees Celsius and above. The second is pressure of homogenization because of the pressure it creates the force and that's how it will cause the breaking of fat globules. Then stages of homogenization that is the first stage and second stage that makes a difference or influence the homogenization efficiency. Then the fat content that is the how much fat is there in milk that is very important and also the ratio of protein and fat that also plays an important role. And finally the proper operation of the homogenizer that also plays an important role. So here we will see how temperature plays an important role in homogenization. Initially above melting point of fat that is above 33 degrees Celsius is required. That is the liquid stage and proper for subdivision of fat. Then secondly the lipase inactivation is very important that is before or after homogenization at 55 degrees Celsius. The routine practice is milk is heated to 65 to 70 degrees Celsius for 
homogenization. Here, the danger zone for lipase activity is between 38 to 49 degrees Celsius. So, milk should not be kept at this temperature. That will cause the more lipase activity and leading to the rancidity of the milk. Here, we will see the pressure required for homogenization. In case of single stage homogenization, if the milk is having up to 6% fat, 2000 to 2500 psi pressure is sufficient. In case of two stage homogenization that is used for liquid products or milk with more than 6% fat to prevent the fat clumping. So we discussed it earlier. In this case, the first stage will be 2000 psi and the second stage will be 500 psi. We can see in the diagram the fat globules size before homogenization and after homogenization. In between black spot we can see the casein molecules as the dispersed phase or in colloidal state. Here we will see the sequence of processing for homogenization. So at earlier stage I have discussed about the location of homogenizer. It can be before pasteurization or after pasteurization or in case of UHT different location. So here we have different combination of sequence for processing. The number one is first there is preheating, then homogenization, then clarification and then pasteurization and cooling. So this is recommended for Indian condition. The second option is first clarification then preheating, then homogenization, then pasteurization and cooling. Another third option is preheating, clarification, homogenization, pasteurization and cooling. So these are the three sequence which can be followed for homogenization. Here we will see the overall effect of homogenization. Firstly, the reduction of size of the fat globules. Secondly, four to six fold increase in the fat and plasma interfacial surface area. There is slight increase in viscosity. There is increased foaming properties, increased digestibility because the fat globule size is reduced. That helps in easy digestion. Then whiter and more appetizing color due to breakdown of fat globule. More full bodied flavor and better mouthfeel. Reduction in heat stability, increased in foaming properties and somewhat increased sensitivity to light. So these are some of the overall effect of homogenization. Here we will see the merits of homogenization. Firstly, no formation of cream layer or plug. As you know, after boiling the milk, if we leave it, there will be a thick layer of cream separated at the top that can be avoided. Fat in milk do not churn due to rough handling or excessive agitation. Whenever milk is going through transportation, there is possibility of churning and separation of fat that is avoided. Better adapted for bulk dispensing, more palatable due to brighter appearance, heavier body and richer flavor. And such a milk produces soft cut that is the homogenized milk and it is less susceptible to oxidized flavor development. So these are some of the important advantages or merits of homogenization or homogenized milk. Here is some of the demerits or disadvantage of homogenization. Firstly, increased cost of production. So because we have to use a separate setup, machine and process, so there is extra cost. Fat recovery is a problem. After homogenization, the recovery of fat is problem later or fat separation. Sediment appears to a greater extent. So due to homogenization, sometimes the sedimentation may be more. Curdling in cookery. So when we are going to cook, sometimes there may be curdling in the milk and more susceptible to production of activated or sunshine flavor defect because the milk has undergone a mechanical treatment and the fat globules are broken so it is more susceptible to produce some undesirable flavor. Now let me sum up today's lecture. So today we have discussed about homogenization, 
what is homogenization what is homogenizer that machinery the mechanism what is the different kind of homogenizer first stage second stage its working mechanism its working flow and then we have discussed the process flow or the sequence of operation and we have also discussed the factors affecting the efficiency or quality of homogenization the most important being the temperature and the pressure we have also discussed about the first stage and second stage homogenization then we have seen overall effect of homogenization and finally we have discussed about the merits or advantages and demerits or disadvantages of homogenization as you can see here it helps in also mixing different kind of milk and by homogenization we can make it uniform so this is briefly about homogenization though altogether it is a little bit more uh, extra or details for undergraduate students but it is very much important for the postgraduate students thank you